Sachs. On the line right now is Professor Alan Sachs from the University of Texas. He's a political science professor that we've talked through the uh, through the campaign and now through the transition process. Professor, good morning. Good morning, sir. Big business lobbies warning the president-elect against mass deportation. It's um, not going to happen. Yeah. I, uh, in fact, Donald Trump, I think the president-elect, uh, actually pulled back from it initially, saying there are some good people here and uh, he has great sympathy, especially for young people that came over uh, when they were very, very young by their parents. But I do think that we're going to see a lot stronger border control. But I don't think that we're going to have to worry about, or the big business going to have to worry about mass deportations. I just don't think that that's going to happen. I, I, I never believed that from the start. But I do think that we're going to get tougher on criminals mm-hmm. and uh, get tougher on the border. And that, I think, is what Donald Trump's going to live up to. And uh, are, are some people, though, going to be disappointed because, you know, we're going we're gonna to lock her up. We're going to lock up Hillary, and, and we're going to deport the, uh, all of these people on day one. And, and all of these promises that were made, I, I know most people kind of looked at it like, well, he's not really going to do all that stuff. But, I mean, it's just kind of the campaign he's rhetoric. Do some of it. But our, but, but, do, I, but, I think in part. But, it, it's not going to be the full-fledged right. lock her up or anything like that or mass deportations. But I do think that uh, there's going to be a lot of a, a, a lot of change. There's going to be a different direction in, yeah. in government. I, I, I uh, guess my question. Nobody expected that. In fact, that's yeah. what all politicians do. They make you know huge claims and then they back away from them yeah. in different ways. And of course, the Congress has a big say in a lot of this. And so, even if the president wanted to do it, sure. uh, there's other branches of government that obviously would slow it down. It's funny because you just referred to Donald Trump as a politician, and that's well, something is. that uh, yeah, think, there's no I, doubt. Fact, as, as I view him, he's becoming more of a politician all the time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my question, though, is more about there is a group, though, that really took him for his word, and and oh, really, that's true. and, and I and I I think that group is going to be. Uh, will they be disappointed, or, or will they be forgiving? Because they were forgiving through the campaign. I think they, they're going to be a little bit more for, uh, for forgiving. I always joke to my students that whenever you hear politicians say, we're going to have a simplified tax system, yeah. we are going to balance the budget. And I'm saying, oh, no, when you say you're going to balance the budget, it means we're going to spend more money. A simplified tax system means more regulations, more more. Uh, uh, of, 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 of a tax code, yeah. and and they laugh at that. It, it's sort of accepted that when politicians stand up and say that. I remember in my own town here, there was a congressman, very powerful at one time, by the name of Dick Army, and he talked about a flat tax, and he said, you can, be, you can guarantee it. We're going to have, in a couple of years, we're going to have a flat tax where you, you can mail it in on a postcard. Yeah. And I kept saying, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah. And, of course, our tax code has become... Uh, ever, ever more complex. Yeah, even it, it's those kind of things we accept it. That's political speak. And what about some of the? Uh, I, I understand it's political speech, and there's a lot of uh, right. there's a lot of that speech coming out of the president elect right now. But things like uh, saying uh, he doesn't he, he he's he doesn't believe what the CIA is saying. He doesn't believe the FBI on this on this Russian stuff. Is there a, a fear though that that could? Uh, really discredit the, uh, the the intelligence community? I hope not. That's a very interesting question. I really hope not. Uh, we just don't know. Yeah. But I, I would say even if uh, the Russians did get into uh, people's emails, but the evidence was still there. In other words, the evidence got out in public, which was very uh, damning, I guess, to the Clinton administration when she was Secretary of State. And uh, just all those emails that kept going on about the Democratic National Committee, uh, the evidence, I shouldn't say the evidence, the emails came out, regardless of how they came out, they came out. John Bolton, who has been reported to be a potential Secretary of State, maybe better as a Deputy Secretary of State, John Bolton on an interview yesterday came out with something very interesting. He said all this could be what they call in diplomatic speak a false flag meaning everybody's pointing their fingers at Russia or somebody else, yeah. and really somebody else did it. Who knows? They just uh, uh, planted a, a false flag and went on from that. In other words, I didn't do it. They did it. You know. Well, and, and I have to say, though, that uh, it's the CIA now coming out and saying, yeah, it really was the Russians. Yeah. However, 
You know, if we go back, um, it's the same CIA that said that uh, that uh, Saddam Hussein had uh, weapons That's of right. mass destruction. So, and I you think know. the FBI may be saying something different. Yeah, the FBI is not uh, not there yet, is That's what right. they're is what they're saying. And so, so all these things kind of, uh, come into play. I don't think you know. I remember. I'm old enough to remember when people were blaming the Russians during the height of the Cold War for trying to influence our elections. Literally, maybe yeah. in different ways. But I remember those kind of charges being made 30, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. The Russians are influencing our election. Yeah. And indeed, they are in different ways. Right. Now, whether or not it is what they are charged of now, sure. but sure, they try to influence our elections. And we have tried to influence the elections of other countries. It has come out pretty much that uh, President Obama's administration tried to influence the election, and so did President Clinton in Israel at different times. Mm-hmm. So we do try to influence the elections. We do the very same thing. That Yahoo on uh, 60 Minutes last night talking about Trump, and in a very positive way. I mean, he's, right. um, he's very positive on uh, on Donald Trump. So, all right, Iran Professor. Iran is saying that if Trump starts a war in the Middle East, you know, Israel's going to be destroyed. So Iran's getting a little bit... Uh, a little bit nervous, but the Iranians have to know that the Israelis have nuclear weapons all over the place. Well, and, and one quick thing, though, what's very interesting, and I'm, it's probably not by design, it'd be amazing if it was, but this Iran deal has really brought um, Israel on on the same team as many Arab countries. That's uh, true. Uh, That's exactly right. That was fact, part of the been evidence yeah. in, in past years, uh, Israel... Some Israeli diplomats have actually been speaking to Saudi Arabian yeah. government officials. Yeah, that was talked and about last night on, on 60 the Minutes. The Saudis wouldn't even be in the same room with an Israeli, but now they're talking to them. So that, um, I mean, who would have thought that that deal would have some, uh, I can't imagine it was, was planned. but It, it has ha- changed everything. It You're really exactly has, right. and, and that might be one positive fact that came out of all this. So, all right, it interesting. It changed everything. You're Pro- absolutely correct. Professor Alan Sachs, as always, thanks so much for coming on. 